Hello everyone, in today's video I want to show you some ink converters and different ways of refilling fountain pens. So these are some of the fountain pens I have and these are some of the ink converters that are used by these pens. On the right side here we have some ink cartridges for brush pens and fountain pens. These are disposable and on the left side we have the ink converters which are basically reusable ink cartridges. So the advantage of using ink converters like this is, well, you get to save a lot more money in the long run because you can buy your own bottle of ink and refill them and you have a lot more options to the types of ink and the colors you can use. Ink cartridges like this are disposable, so once you use them up, you have to throw them away. Um, if they are empty, you can also sort of uh, refill them if you have the right equipment. So for this empty ink cartridge, I can actually refill it using this blunt needle and syringe. You may notice there's a ball bearing inside. That ball bearing is actually the stopper that prevents the ink from coming out. So when you push this into the fountain pen, the ball bearing will be dislodged and go into the ink cartridge. And it also serves a function when you're writing uh, this ball bearing can actually push the ink around so that you can get access to ink at all times. Sometimes the ink may, I mean when you're writing like this, the ink may be stuck at the top so you can move the pen around to have the ball bearing move the ink around. Some of these ink cartridges, they are quite small so if you draw or write a lot, you may use them up very quickly and if you keep buying them, it's going to cost a lot of money. Here are some ink converters that I have. Some are brand specific, which means you can only use them with specific brands of pens. So for example, we have a Lamy ink converter here. This can only be used with Lamy fountain pens. You see these protruding knots there on the sides? So they slot into this groove here of the fountain pen. So this can only be used with Lamy fountain pens. And for this ink converters, you can see the opening, they are of different sizes. So they can only fit the fountain pens that have the correct size. Some ink converters are considered international size and they can be used with different brands of fountain pens. I do recommend you read up more on your fountain pen uh, before you go and buy an ink converter just to make sure that you buy the right one. All right, let's take a look at the different types of ink converters. So this is the piston ink converter and this is the twist type piston. So you can twist the back here and the piston will go up and down. There is another variation for this piston ink converter and it's the push-pull type. So for this particular one, it also has this little um, spring inside. This spring can move the ink around just like the ball bearing. So you don't have to shake your fountain pen to get the ink flowing. Of these two ink converters, I prefer the push-pull type because in this case here, there is the spring inside and this is way easier to reload compared to the twisting type. And when it comes to cleaning, this is also way easier to clean. To clean my fountain pen, I usually run the grip section and the feet under the tap. And to clean it more thoroughly, I will use the ink converter like this and put it in some clean water. Take in the clean water and push out the dirty ink. So this movement here, it's so much easier with the push-pull uh, ink converter. With the twist type ink converter, I have to keep twisting it. And you can see it's not that fast. It still works, but it's not as fast and convenient and easy compared to the push-pull. So if you see an ink converter that's compatible with your pen and it has this push-pull mechanism, I would recommend going with this rather than going with this. And just make sure that they fit because they may look like they fit but they actually don't. So this particular one also has a rather small opening but it just doesn't fit this uh, Hero fountain pen. And this one fits 
The sizes for this hose, they look similar, but the diameter, they are different at the top. Next, we have the push button in converter. This particular one is the Pilot Con 70. This can be used with a variety of Pilot fountain pens. What I like about this is there is that thing inside that can move ink around and it has a huge ink capacity and this push button it's very easy to use it makes cleaning the fountain pen very easy just like the push pull uh, piston converter so to refill this pen you just have to keep pushing the button behind and it will suck the ink into the ink converter and it can fill the ink converter quite fully when it comes to cleaning, you can suck in clean water very easily but when you press the button to push the water out, um, it's not that easy. So this is actually designed for getting ink into the ink converter rather than pushing the ink out. So to clean it, you have to shake the ink out. The next type of ink converter is the ink sack and this is the type that I do not like because it's very difficult to fill up the ink sack completely to the maximum capacity and for this particular one I am not able to see how much ink is inside the ink sack. With this yes I can see how much ink is inside but again very difficult to fill this up to the maximum capacity. I do not recommend this. All the ink converters that I have shown you earlier, they are all better than this. And even if you have to refill this with blunt needle and syringe, it's also easier compared to using this. One thing about the Pilot Con 70 ink converter is this is quite big. So it can only be used with fountain pens that have a big body, such as this Pilot Custom 74, which has a rather long body. If you were to use this with a smaller fountain pen such as the Pilot Prera So you can see this body is already shorter compared to the ink converter It does fit but you won't be able to close it up So the appropriate size for this will be the Pilot Con 50 which by the way, it has been discontinued, so you may have to get the Pilot Con 40. If you don't want to deal with ink converters, you can buy fountain pens that have built-in ink refilling mechanisms, such as the ones that I have here. So let's take a look at this. This is a Pilot Custom Heritage 92, and it comes with a built-in piston ink converter. The ink capacity for this pen, it's huge because it basically uses the whole volume here. Now the pen that I use the most often is this Pelican M200. A lot of Pelican fountain pens, they have this uh, piston built into their pen. And the main reason why I like this sort of refilling mechanism is because it can hold a lot of ink, so I don't have to refill the pen that often. In addition to the Pilot Custom Heritage 92 and the Pelican M200, the other fountain pens that have built-in ink converters are some of the fountain pens from Twispy, which is a company from Taiwan. They make very affordable and good quality fountain pens. So Twispy is a brand that I can recommend, especially for people who don't want to spend too much money but still want to get a fountain pen with built-in ink converter. This is really nice. And we have the Noodleless Ahab. For this particular fountain pen, the piston is actually the push-pull type. And we have the Noodleless Conrad, which is this one here. It has a little cap behind for the twist uh, mechanism. And this is also a piston uh, ink converter. You can see the piston. Here we have a window to let you see how much ink is left inside, which is good. Now the downside to the two noodles pen are um, they are quite smelly and um, the design, they don't look particularly pleasing 
at least to me. If you know of any other fountain pens with built-in ink converters, share them in the comment section with other viewers on my channel. This is an Esther Brook fountain pen. I'm not sure which model. This particular pen has an ink sac inside and this lever here. You're supposed to do this action to squeeze the ink sac inside to get the ink into the pen. Downside is you cannot see how much ink is inside the pen and I don't really like ink sacs. Another ink refilling mechanism is the vacuum suction. So this is the Pilot Custom 823 and this uses vacuum to suck the ink into the body and this holds a lot more ink compared to all the other fountain pens that I have featured. I mean, this can probably last you for a month of intensive writing and drawing. The way this pen refills is actually quite cool. So let's, let me show you. So once it pushes the piston down, the vacuum will break and you can see the ink will get sucked into the body. Well, in this case, I'm using water. It's a really cool way to refill the pen, but after a while, it does feel a bit gimmicky. And you won't be refilling this pen very often because it can hold so much ink. The other pen that I have that uses the vacuum suction is the Twispy Vac 700. So we have the knob here and the mechanism is the same. The last way to refill a fountain pen, as far as I know, is to turn the fountain pen into an eyedropper pen. So basically, instead of using the ink cartridge or ink converter, you can take this out by an O-ring, which is basically uh, something like this. The O-ring is probably made of rubber or silicone. This, by the way, is not the type to use because this is from the Lamy Safari. You're supposed to get a very flexible type like a rubber band and put the O-ring at the bottom here, apply some silicone grease onto the threads, fill the body of the pen with ink and then close it up. So that's the eyedropper pen conversion. The thing is with this particular pen, at least, I can actually find an ink converter for it, so I don't have to actually convert this into an eyedropper. Unless you really want the extra ink capacity and you don't want to buy fountain pens with built-in ink uh, converters. So that may be one affordable way to get more ink for your fountain pen. So these are the different types of ink converters, built-in ink converters, and different ways to refill fountain pens. If you know of other methods or special ink converters, let me know in the comment section below. All right, I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.